Early in April, the Phillies had traded pitcher Jason Grimsley to the Houston Astros for Kurt Schilling. It is still considered one of the worst trades in Astros history, and since then, there have been a number of them. So how did Kurt assess the season with his new team? Let's find out. Welcome back to the Great Sports Debate with special guest Phillies pitcher Kurt Schilling. And Kurt, I'll throw the first question to you. Wally Backman, uh, over the weekend, stated that he thought the Phillies were an improved team, but anybody who felt they really could contend this year would be kidding themselves. I wonder, first of all, how you react to that and if you feel the same way. Well, I definitely don't feel the same way. And there could be a couple reasons behind what he said. He might have been saying that to take some of the pressure off the younger guys, feeling like, well, you know, if we got to win, we should be winning. And, and you know, I don't think Wally would, would uh, well, I don't think any of us would be happy about showing up to the park if, if say, if we were on the Houston Astros because they don't have a chance there. <laughs> and I know what it feels like to come to the park knowing you're just going to play nine innings, win or lose. And here, it's play nine innings to win, you know, and, and every man. See, the, the upside uh, of this is this team is, what, five and a half games back? Something like that, Like right? five and a half mean, percent. Percent. There's a pennant race there to be won. And I don't know if this team See, can do it, but it's certainly I mean, too early to count them who's out. Who's running away with the, with the division, too? I mean, the Pirates have come way back to the pack. There's real, right now, there's really nobody that I see that's going to run away with anything. Well, Kurt, project for us what will happen. Uh, what do you see happening in the next month or two? Well, I, people to me, getting healthy? It's, it's funny to listen to people talk about how we're, we're in last place and where, you know, there's no chance because, I mean, obviously you guys all cover sports. I mean, stranger things have obviously happened. Inside of a week, Toronto mm -hmm. and Detroit have turned around a pennant race in five days. Yep. Mm -hmm. We win seven or eight games straight, and St. Louis drops five straight. We're three out, and everybody's t calling us, you know, now we're the miracle kids. When it's not, to me, it starts to become a miracle when it gets around 10 games or 11 games. Then you're starting to really have to reach to, to win. But Talking about some of the Phillies and Dale Murphy situation, which you got a chance to meet. Did you know him before you became a no, Philly? No, uh -uh. So you just... I met him. Tell us, I mean, you've met a lot of players along the way. Tell us about Dale Murphy, what he's been he, like. He reminds me of Cal Ripken to the T, really? except that Murph talks a little bit more. <laughs> and uh, he's always always offering advice to everybody. He loves to talk baseball. I mean, the guy's been in baseball since Admiral Doubleday was hitting fungos, and he still <laughs> loves to talk. He still loves to talk baseball. And, and that's something that's hard to find in a guy that's been around a long time. And, He's smart and, and he's, he's, he's fun to play with and he's an unbelievable talent. Okay, now this leads to a question. It's an interesting situation. He's got 398 <coughs> career home runs, a 265 average. He's won a couple of RBI crowns, a couple of home run titles. Couple how much more? MVPs. Right, a couple of MVPs. Back. How many How many more years he's got, if any, hard to say right now? Do you put him in the Hall of Fame? Do you think right now, Kurt, he's a Hall of Fame? I don't think there's any question. No I doubt. Think, I don't think it's even a question. I think anybody that has a res reservation, you know, doesn't really understand what he's done for See, the game. Statistically, here's my argument. Statistically, there's somebody with a reservation. <laughs> no, I don't. But I actually, he, oh, I you agree changed with you. your mind to this. No, I don't. We went on the air. God, I, you, you sat here earlier today and well, said you, you called you called him marginal. No, wait. I think what he said was marginal. somebody has to say no. No, no, that's not <laughs> so what I said at all. This is the this was my thinking on it. Just I've already been on the radio for four hours saying it, Schmendrick. The jock comes in and all of a sudden I'm not done yet. Why don't you shut up? You let me talk down. Here. This isn't a Glenn Mack now show. Keep Should quiet for be. a second. He's marginal. He's on the borderline with he, those numbers. Marginal. Right? On the borderline well, with you're a voter. I think those are borderline here's, numbers. Here's the way are I those in the gray? Right. Everybody who's right. hit four hundred homers right. and has been eligible for the Hall of Fame has made the Hall of Fame. Except, except Dave Kingman, who had several drawbacks. Okay. Four hundred and forty two yeah. homers though. Yeah, I know. But what else? Yeah, he hit about Nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. He didn't do anything. <laughs> and Dale Murphy. <laughs> qualifies by every standard. Won right. five gold gloves, won two MVP awards. Right. He's your fairly upstanding citizen. Right. I wrote He's got everything it takes. So what's the difference so between 398 and 400? Let me, tell you, what is the you Let me explain Dale something. Here. The New York Papers this week, in one of the papers, the Newark Star Ledger, Morse Klein, good writer, you admire him, right? Yes, well. He yeah. said, <laughs> Dale Murphy, <laughs> admire Murphy, yeah, I, I Del Murphy does not belong in the Hall of Fame because the numbers are not enough. Sorry he doesn't do it. Here's what I look at. You know the character issue is a big deal? Yeah. To me, if you're going to penalize a guy for not uh, Dave Kingman type of guy, right, who never did anything outside of the game, made a lot of enemies, right? Yeah. You've got to reward a guy 
who's been I agree. absolutely exemplary. How the way Murphy. I agree. Put I Dave Kingman and Dale Murphy in <laughs> the, the same pair of oh, the the Because about, Dale Murphy won hmm. two MVP titles and Dave Kingman didn't. Dale Murphy won the RBI crowns and Dave Kingman it's didn't. Not what I'm Let me ask you this. Uh, it's irrelevant. The, the character issue is irrelevant. That's what I said. Who's right. why he's a borderline guy? No, it's not. Is Jim Rice in? No, because who are the two? Look at the numbers. Wait a second. Who are the best hitters of the National League in the 1980s? There's two. There's Mike Schmidt and there's Dale Murphy. I agree with that. And that's it. Right, and if he's one of the two best hitters in the league for a decade, he's in. Right, but the, right, what the else character, is But there? the character issue is not irrelevant. You're not no. putting him in the Hall of Fame because he's a good guy. You're putting him in the Hall of Fame because he's a good guy and he was a great player. Well, let's go to Kurt. Kurt, how much should the character issue count in well, voting for Obviously, it counts a lot in the case of Pete Rose. That's exactly right. You can't vote yeah. for him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not, well, obviously, you can't vote for him. Issue. Yeah, but if you were allowed <coughs> to vote for him, I really don't think the writers, they, they'd just slough it off. He'd get in. You know he'd oh, get he, in. He, he well, should well, be in, I think. You think he should uh, be yeah. in? Sure he should. Yeah. I don't think the fact that Dale Murphy's a terrific guy should really count in voting for him in the Hall of Fame. I, I, I agree to an extent, but I, but I think his contributions to the game speak for themselves. I think Five Jim Rice and Dale do. Murphy are comparable players, mm -hmm. and I think that Jim Rice is a very, very questionable what? Hall of Fame vote, and so is Dale Murphy. Well, Mur Rice is another good example. You see Murphy interacting with other players on the team, Kurt. Does his presence in the locker room affect the way other people behave? In a positive way. <laughs> to an ex uh, yeah, to yeah, in a positive well, way. Can you throw maybe a <laughs> soft I'm trying to get softball? <laughs> I'm trying it's to amazing. find out about the Murphy. I threw a guy up on character. I want to hear what he has amazing. to say about the it. transformation you have from Why when a guy you? comes on. Can we replace him with the dog? <laughs> Seriously, hey. I'm trying to get some information from the guy, which you, is more than you're doing. You've you really played wait. softball before, right? Yeah. Have you ever had easier pitches <laughs> than this? <laughs> All right, we get to the final issue. Kurt's not going to be able to stay too much longer, but we want to get to this because on Sunday, if you watch the game on Sunday, Kurt got squeezed unbelievably by McSherry, the, the umpire. It was a travesty. I know you felt the same way, Kurt. No, not even close. <laughs> <laughs> my my words to him, uh, my exact words to him as I came up the field were, you know, I, I kind of went, hey. And he looked over at me and I said, you did a great job today. And he said, thanks, you did too. He, he called an outstanding game. But the belt was a ball. It's always the a, it's is a always ball. always a ball. Well, what is a strike? <laughs> Knee high down the middle of the plate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. It's, no it's 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 a lot. It's one of the reasons why games take so long to play now because oh, the absolutely. strike zone has gotten smaller. It's do definitely not rule books. Do you ever zone. mention anything to the ump? I don't have enough time in the big leagues to mention anything to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta wait a few years yeah, for that. Exactly. Huh? I don't see, do you know when you go to the mound? Do you know who's behind the plate and what kind of a strike zone you're gonna be really. with? Not really. No, no? I, I would only remember a guy. That has done a game that I've, I've pitched before that's done really well or really bad. <laughs> and I, I don't, you know, if you don't recognize him, I guess that's the best thing. All right, there was, a, there was a game in New York on Sunday in which one inning took an hour and 14 minutes to play. What would you guys do to make the game faster? Hot dogs. What? <laughs> what? Eat a lot of hot dogs. No, this, this wouldn't make it move any Thank faster. Thank you for that well, contribution. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. What I would do is, and I think it's already there in the rules, is don't let the guy step out of the box for a half an hour between pitches. Don't let the pitcher walk off the mound and rub the ball and look at the center fielder. The beauty stay of the on the mound. Stay in I the agree. batter's box. 20 seconds between pitches. Let's get it moving. Kirk, Kirk, it's it's right. yeah. First of all, I, I, actually, I'm addressing this not personally, but to all of you. Okay. If you've never played the game at the major league level, you don't understand what goes on. A pitcher that, that steps off the mound and, and takes his time between pitches, there's reasons that we do that. It, it, it might be a tight situation in a ball game where we need to relax and get our thoughts together and get things going. And I'm not thinking about Jeff in row 40 of the upper deck who's upset but because... But you've got to, because Jeff's no. buying that ticket. No, yeah, if but the but game's but lasting three hours and ten minutes, I, I Jeff in row 40 ain't going to keep coming I don't back. Think, see, I don't think we're talking about that tight spot. No. We're talking about a guy like Lenny who takes a stroll between every pitch. Who's That's to say Lenny's that hasn't game. helped Lenny? I, that is, but Lenny, Lenny, Lenny uses Lenny's it as sure a device. But I'm sure it's if amazing. everybody the did it, they're too long, Al. They're too long. That's supposed to be the beauty of the game. I'm the guy that usually argues against it. I'm telling you, that is what makes that game different and special. Al, there's a lot there's of beauty timelessness. in a two-hour and 15-minute game. That's a beautiful you game. They don't, want time. Time. they don't wear wool anymore. Why's all the scratching? Where's that coming from? It's just a, it's Nervous? A, it's a genetic thing here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I want to ask her something before yeah. he goes, because right. normally toward the end of the show, we do a segment called Weasel of the Week, mm. and, and I, we'd sort of like to give you that That'll opportunity. Be yeah. Now, before you go, we appreciate you having you on, uh, to, to give a Weasel of the Week, if in fact you have one. Uh, 
I don't think it's there's any question. It's got to be hands down Angelo. Okay. Is my <laughs> right. way. What is it? I saw the show where you ripped the Kentucky Derby. Oh. Oh. For no other reason than just to rip it. No, the and you probably watched it and, and taped it. No, I didn't. You're, no, come and on, And you probably I wagered on it. How would I watch that event? Al knows me. I don't just, like horses; they smell. Well, that knows he could have run in it. <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's a it's tradition. It's what sports is about. It's that was tradition. A setup. No, that, that up. <laughs> nothing we did today was just <laughs> Kurt just happened to walk in. That's it. Kurt, thanks for coming by. Thank you. We I appreciate, appreciate having you. Good luck the rest of the Thank season. Thank you. All right. I didn't like Kurt Schilling then either. And, and I'm going to tell you what happened there. And, and my colleagues at the Great Sports Debate are not going to like this. The minute Kurt Schilling walked in, the three of them were like little girls at a rock concert. Oh, Kurt Schilling's here. I'm so excited. Mac now lit up like a Christmas tree, all right? Miss Sinelli, was he there then? I don't even remember. Yeah, Miss Sinelli thought he was the greatest thing that ever happened in his life. And Al Morgani asked for his autograph, all right? The truth of the matter is that Kurt Schilling was a jackass 20 years ago and is still one today. And I never felt any different about him then. If I was courteous on the screen, I don't remember how I acted, um, I was a typical top professional. The real story, what I was thinking is, what an idiot. I can't wait for him to leave. Well, Angelo, we know it was 20 years ago, and we'll let our viewers decide for themselves. Up next, some strong Eagles remarks from Reggie White. Should he be the one talking to the media about the team? That's up for debate next.